Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. Happy Friday. I am back with another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered, and I have my homegirl, Emily, with me. Emily, say what's up. What's up? Hey, everybody. So it is a lot going on right now in the news. It is so much tea, conspiracies, everything being spilled about this whole situation with the submersive that went down. Um, There was five people on there. They were on a hunt to go see the Titanic. And come to find out yesterday, the explosion where their submersible exploded um, in the Atlantic, it was discovered. And all five passengers are, of course, dead. And we don't even know if their bodies are going to be able to be recovered. But Mm -hmm. it's been a lot of talk. I mean, hell, James Cameron is going on a media blitz. He ain't had this much attention since Avatar, honey. Yeah, it's very interesting given Avatar and the waters and, you know, obviously he's the 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 creator behind Titanic, which is one both one of our favorite movies. So. Mm-hmm. I love Titanic, and there's a lot of just a lot of eerie similarities between what happened with these billionaires. Because again, to get on this submersible, you had to have it was a hundred, it was two hundred fifty thousand per person, mm-hmm. and it's very interesting that these billionaires were on this submersible and they ended up dying. They weren't taking heed to the warnings because there's a whole submersible community. Um, And Emily, you can talk more about that. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting how just like in the movie Titanic, you had the caps, you had the captain not listening to iceberg warnings. Um, He even ordered the last two boilers, you know, lit because he wanted to get there a day early listening to stupid ass Mr. Ismay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I know that movie, honey. (laughs) And, um, you know, it's just very interesting how the same tragedy befell these people. And another thing about the Titanic, um, there's a lot of conspiracies concerning that because some of the most richest men and women, honestly, were on the Titanic. Mm-hmm. On April 12th, 19, what was it? April 11th, 1912. And so, like I was telling everybody when we had our Zoom meeting yesterday, think about it like this. This would be like having Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, um, the founder of Google, you know, the founder of Instagram, you know, just these rich tech billionaires. And they're all deciding to go, you know, on a rocket and God forbid it, you know, it explodes. Yeah. And that's kind of what happened with Titanic. These were the most wealthiest people in the world. And they were all on that boat. And legend has it, they were all there because of J.P. Morgan. And J.P. Morgan at the time was one of the richest men in America. He's also the founder of J.P. Morgan Bank. And at the last minute, he decided not to go on to the Titanic. Mm. After that is when we got like the national banking system and just all types of things that happened after the Titanic sank. So there's always been conspiracies around this. And it's very interesting that we fast forward a hundred and something years later and you had these billionaires, you know, facing the same death, unfortunately. Yeah, it's really unfortunate. And um, I see, I I did kind of notice how the energy changed when, you know, we we didn't really have a lot of information at first Mm -hmm. and, People were like, oh, my gosh, you know, I'm praying for him. This is so terrible. As soon as everybody found out they were billionaires, they were like, oh, well, that's their dumb asses, you know. So it completely changed once they, which I think that in itself is probably a whole nother conversation why people kind of look at people with money different. Mm-hmm. But I will say for myself, I, I find it really tragic and sad. I feel terrible for the people um, that that happened to and, you know, their families that are grieving. But this is, to me, no different than someone who wants to go jump into a uh, enclosure with a lion, you know, for some to, to go viral or some shit. These people made terrible, terrible um, decisions that that ended horribly. Like you were mentioning, there's a whole submersive, <clears throat> excuse me, submersible community 
this has not been um, this is not new that everybody has talked about how dangerous this thing is. The waiver that you have to sign, like literally says you're probably going to die. Like, I'm, you know, I'm uh, not verbatim, but it, it's a very uh, black and white situation. You know, they have made trips down there before successfully, from my understanding. But these people made terrible, terrible choices where several people, scientists, uh, experts, everybody told them, no, this is terrible. This it even says in the um, the what is that called? The the form they fill, uh, fill out disclosure, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um that this is not regulated and yeah. going, this is, you know, this is thousands of feet underwater. This is not, you know, like you're just going snorkeling that once you get to a certain depth in the ocean, it, it's completely different. Like, yeah, you, folks don't eat me up if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure like even there's certain Marine life that doesn't dive that deep in the water. Whales don't dive 12,000 feet like that deep. So mm -hmm. that I don't think human beings need to be that far under the ocean. Like that's, it's not like you're just floating in the water like when you're swimming. You know, the, the pressures itself is, like I said, a whole nother conversation. But uh, it's a really unfortunate situation. But these people make terrible decisions. Long story short. Yeah, I personally, I don't do water. Hell, I can barely swim. So this would <laughs> not be something that I would do. But I get it. I get, you know, you have the money. You only live once. You want to try out new adventures. And exploration is part of our DNA. Yeah. I mean, think about if people didn't explore North America, if they didn't explore places in Africa and China, we'd all be stuck in our little corners of the world. So exploration, that was part of exploration. You didn't know, you know, when you sailed off on that, the Nina, the Pinta and the Santa Maria, if you were ever going to come back home, if you were ever going to see your wife again or your children, you know, but that's, we wouldn't be where we are now in modern times if it was not for explorers. So I can't knock them because they wanted to explore the depths. Is it for me? No. Do I find glee in it because they're billionaires? Absolutely not. You know, a death right. is a death. A, a life loss is a life loss. You know, these people were loved. They had families and things like that. So my heart definitely goes out to them. Then to find out that the son uh, the aunt was on the news and she was saying that he was really scared. He didn't want to go, but he said he decided to, you know, to take the the trip with his father as a bonding experience for Father's Day. That's really sad. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I would have been very scared, too. And I, I'm, you know, on my bucket list, I'm going to go swim with some orcas one day. So, you know, I now I, do, I could not imagine being in a submarine, me personally, but I do. I love the ocean. I'm obsessed with like the marine life and stuff. Mm -hmm. I, um, you know, I don't get really into the science of it, but I love Blue Planet too. That's my show. They get in a submersible in that show. They go into the deep. You know, they go into the Mariana Trench. They go past the twilight zone into the midnight zone. And the stuff in our oceans is insane. I mean, it literally looks like aliens, some otherworldly stuff. So I do, as far as the exploration part, you know, I, I want to say 90% of our oceans are have not been explored. We know more yeah. about the surface of Mars than we do our own oceans on our own planet. So I'm here for, you know, the exploration and, and all that. Uh, like you said, me personally, I couldn't be in a submarine. I'm too claustrophobic for that. But um, I do think that this is a very cautionary tale as to if you do want to explore and stuff like that, definitely do your research and uh, make sure that it's regulated, that it's safe. There were so many red flags where people were, you know, sending out letters, sending emails saying this is not safe. Do not do this. You're going to die. And, you know, they, they took the, the risk, unfortunately. And I even saw where one woman, um, they did an interview. It was like a news segment or something. I don't even think this lady was rich. She was talking about how she she's obsessed with the Titanic and she wants to see it. And it's her lifelong dream to be able to, to see the Titanic. And, you know, she was saying some people save up money, you know, for like uh, cars, for homes. She's spending her life saving up to go see the Titanic. So um, the particular people that were on this submersible, you know, happen to be very wealthy. But, you know, not everybody that gets put in these situations are just completely rich. You never know. Some of these people might have saved up their whole lives. Yeah, because that's something they can say that they did mm -hmm. that not many people have been able to see. And, you know, like you said, only uh, five percent of the ocean has been discovered. You know, it's a whole nother world down there. And that's why I 
believe in things like the Marine Kingdom. You know, we Me were too. raised on that as part of our culture. Um, a lot of West Africans, Caribbeans, you know, can speak about the Marine Kingdom, just like we have a kingdom here on earth, there's a kingdom down below. And, you know, there's marine spirits and, and deities, and there's just certain respects that you have to show the oceans and the waters and stuff like that. Um, water is a conduit, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I think this entire situation is also very spiritual. Oh, yeah. Um, we're also in cancer season, which is a water sign. On top of that, I can't tell you literally how many post, I believe the other day that I saw on Discord, literally, I think it was like 300 Nigerians died on a capsized boat, a um, hundred and something, you know, uh, Pakistanis or just, it was literally like maybe five or six boat stories that were posted wow. on Discord of around the world of people who have died, like massive groups of people who have died on boats just in the past week. So that was very eerie to see like all of these water deaths and, you know, things that are going on in the water. And so I, I just, you know, it's, it's a lot of very interesting talks. So let's go ahead and play some of these conspiracy videos because we know to find a good conspiracy, honey, you got to go on to TikTok. Cause That's right. Everybody else hides the truth. Now. We yeah, see they got the team. Yeah. We see now why they don't want TikTok around. Yeah. So we're going to watch some videos. This first one we're going to watch is um, with James Cameron. Search, search, search. Four days of search. They're searching everywhere. They're they were running around with their hair on fire. The sub was right where it was. It was literally on the seafloor below its last known position, which is the first place you look in a search is the last known position. You don't go running around all over the landscape with planes and trains and automobiles searching. Right. It was right where it was when it imploded. And I knew that's where they were going to find it. So Ocean Gate shouldn't have been doing what it was doing. I think that's pretty clear. I wish I had been more vocal about that, but I think I was unaware that they weren't certified. I mean, this father and son on Father's Day, you know, paid half a million dollars to go down in this thing. Holy crap. You know, it's just it's just tr tragic and it's horrific and it's unnecessary. And by the way, it's not lost on me as, as somebody who studied the, the meaning of Titanic. It's, it's greater meaning to us, you know, historically and societally, that it's about warnings that were ignored. That ship's lying at the bottom of the ocean, not because of the nature of its steel or the nature of its compartments, but just because of bad seamanship. Mm. He made some points. Yeah. And, and that's the truth of the matter. We're going to watch the next one here. James Cameron, director of Titanic, has been down to the Titanic 30 times. Yeah. He, he quotes, he spent more time on the Titanic than the captain of the Titanic. And one of the things that has become clear is that many letters were sent to this company saying, what you're doing is too risky. Many people in the community were very concerned about this sub. And a number of the top players in the, in the uh, deep submergence engineering community even wrote letters to the company saying that what they were doing was too experimental to carry passengers and that needed to be certified and and so on so i'm i'm struck by the similarity of the titanic disaster itself where the captain was repeatedly warned about ice ahead of his ship and yet he steamed at full speed into an ice field on a moonless night and many people died as a result. And for a very similar tragedy where warnings went unheeded to take place at the same exact site, uh, I, I think it's just astonishing. It's really quite surreal. Okay, so now I want to go ahead and play this because you know the Simpsons, honey. Mm. They're always tied into some conspiratorial stuff. They are. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and watch this my name is Stockton Rush. I'm the CEO and founder of OceanGate. Let's take a look at Titan. So we're coming into the sub. This is the only toilet available on a deep diving submersible. Best seat in the house. You can look out the viewport. We put a privacy screen in, turn up the music, and uh, it's uh, very popular. We have our uh, control screen here, our sonar screen here, and we can put any image we want in the back. We've taken a completely new approach to the sub design, and it's all run with this game controller and these touch screens. So if you want to go forward, you press forward. If you want to go back, you go back. 
turn left, turn right, go down, go up. And it's Bluetooth, so I can hand it to anybody. And it's meant for a 16-year-old to throw it around and super durable. We keep a couple of spares on board just in case. Change the channel, Marge. Terrifying and so scary. We're all thinking about the people on board. When you heard that they were missing and there was no contact, what were your first thoughts as someone who's been there? I mean, this entire industry, this travel adventure travel industry is dangerous. Going up in the rockets, visiting yeah. the volcanoes, everybody knows the risks involved. Um, and I can tell you that these submersibles are one-offs. It's not like iPhones, there are thousands of them that they can perfect. There's one of it. Mm -hmm. And so there are certain improvised, you know, he got the, the lights from Camper World. He, he drives the thing with an Xbox joystick uh, game controller. So, but this is all standard in the field and you, you know that it's a risk, so. But when they, when they first lost contact, why, were, why wasn't there effort to ma made to get to them immediately? How long was this trip supposed to last, number one? Usually it's 10 to 12 hours. Okay. It's two and a half hours down, a few hours at the Titanic, and then a couple hours back up. Um, why didn't they send the alarm sooner? I, I can only guess it's because things go wrong all the time in this business, uh -huh. the, the time I was there. My dive to the Titanic only lasted 37 feet down. And then it had a mechanical problem and had to be hoisted back onto the ship. Change the channel, Marge. Today I'm filled with joy, searching for treasure with my long lost son. My dream for each of you is that you find the happiness I feel today. And my dream is to someday wear a real wetsuit instead of one that is just painted on. Mr. Spot. There we go. These waters contain some of Mother Nature's most stunning creatures. Haha, <laughs> that's what you get for being luminous, jerks. Homer, look! The treasure of Piso Mahado! Hey guys, we found the treasure. When I get to shore, I'm bringing it right to the bar. Oh, which way did Mason go? That must be him over there. That's so creepy. It really is. It's like, I just, the predictive programming with the Simpsons, you can't tell me that it's not done on purpose and that they don't know something. No, there's been so many instances. I mean, there's been dozens of instances where the Simpsons has predicted so many things. So, yeah, no, this is, you, you can't tell me it either. Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.